In this short video, you will learn how to use the Download Files API endpoint. When the download request is initiated, Localize will fetch keys and their values based on the provided criteria, organize them into translation files of the chosen format, pack the files into the archive, which is also called a bundle, and store this archive on Amazon S3. As a result, you'll get a link to this archive which is valid for one year. Optionally, you can run one or multiple app triggers previously set on Localize. For example, you can create a new pull request on GitHub or notify a third-party service about the newly downloadable bundle. So, to get started, let's proceed to the Localize Developer Hub. Navigate to Localize API Playground and open Files, Download Files. Start by pasting your API token into the corresponding field. Next, provide your Localize project ID to download translations from. You will also need to specify a file format. Learn about all the supported formats by checking the file formats article. For example, let's enter JSON. Also, you'll need to decide how to organize your translation files. If the original file names option is set to false, all your translations will be separated by their language and placed into a single file. Set this option to true when your translation keys were previously assigned to file names on Localize and you would like to preserve this structure. Learn more about keys and file names in our documentation. If the original file names option was set to false, you'll be able to provide a custom bundle structure in the next field. You can also use a number of placeholders like format and lang iso. For example, let's store all files under the locales folder. Group these files into subdirectories named after the language code, and also use the language code in the file names. The All Platforms option is set to False by default. It means that only the keys associated with the platform of the chosen format will be exported. Set it to True to include all platform keys. Filter Langs allows you to choose what language to export. By default, all project languages will be exported, but you can provide one or more language ISO codes under this option. For example, let's download only English and French translations. Filter Data enables you to narrow the scope of the downloaded translations. For example, let's download only the translated strings. To learn more about these filters, please check the Downloading Files article in our documentation. Adjust the Filter File Names option if you would like to download only the keys assigned to specific file names on Localize. Also, you can include or exclude translation keys with the specific tags that can be adjusted using Localize Project Editor. Use the Export Sort option to adjust the sorting criteria for your keys. You can also include key comments and descriptions, but these options will have effect only if storing additional data is actually supported by the chosen format. Include PIDs allows you to provide other project IDs to download translations from. Please note that Localize will not filter duplicate keys and only include languages selected previously. The Triggers option is used to run one or multiple app triggers previously set on Localize. For example, if you have enabled GitHub app, it's possible to create a new pull request with the downloaded data by specifying GitHub. Learn more about Localize apps in our documentation. If your translations contain placeholders or plural keys, make sure to choose the plural and placeholder format. Learn more about the supported formats in the Plurals and Placeholders article. You can also provide a webhook URL to notify a third-party service. Learn more about webhooks in our Developer Hub. Use the Language Mapping option to override the language codes. For example, let's say that the FR code should be exported as FRFR. Next, you can override the default identation for the chosen file format. For instance, we can set it to two spaces. And that's it! You can adjust other platform-specific options as needed, and once you're ready, click the Try It button. Wait for a couple of seconds and... Voila! Here's our bundle URL, so let's copy it. You can also view the response headers by clicking on the corresponding button, or you can replay the same request. Now let's open the URL in the browser. As you can see, that's a basic archive and the folder structure matches the pattern that we've specified. 
Great job.